This is News 8 on Wood TV. Live from the Media Arts Center in downtown Grand Rapids for an Art Prize special. Meet the artists. Hi everyone, welcome to night two of Meet the Artists. I'm Michelle DeSelms. Tonight, we're gonna talk to the talented people from around the world filling our streets, museums, and restaurants with art. For much of tonight, we will focus on art dealing with issues of equality and race. It's been one of the main topics in our society over the past year and a half, and it inspired a lot of the art on display here at Art Prize. These are powerful entries tackling deep and important parts of our society. If you see something you like tonight, make sure to come downtown and award the artist. Just bring your phone and scan those QR codes. Already more than 100 artists have received monetary prizes totaling more than $50,000, and that's just so far. We'll start tonight's art prize tour inside the powerful exhibit at Fountain Street Church. One of the entries there is a chair painted black and white that actually talks to you. Truth. Truth. I spoke with the artist from Kalamazoo about the meaning behind his first ever art prize entry. So tell me how you came up with this concept. That is, uh, I, uh, there's a lot involved actually. Um, my work deals with social dialogue and I put pieces together that would have some positive effect on people, uh, either participating or viewing their work of the work. So with this piece, uh, this racial issue has been front burner for some time, and I wanted to contribute something to that, that dialogue that's going on in society. And from there, the way I work, uh, the media chosen is content driven and context driven. So working with this issue, I wanted to make a comparison between, well, actually, a uh, a unity between black and white. And I've worked with chairs before, and uh, I had worked with sound technology and triggering sounds in a uh, big installation at Western Michigan University, for instance. Um, so I started with the chair and decided, okay, I'll divide it half black and half white. And worked with the sound technology to uh, record voices with a list of words. And uh, each person says 19 different words, and I edited out those words individually. And it's programmed in so that when you lean to the black side, a black person's voice says a word, but it's randomly chosen from that list of about eight people saying those words. You do the same on the white as well. It's randomly chosen from those sound files. Uh, so it, it, what it did is it, it uh, presented the content which is important in this piece and it's the simple thing that we start with, that we are all human beings, we are all part of the chair. The chair is the metaphor for who we are as people. And same words, randomly chosen, lots of different voices. Uh, so my hope is that someone will experience that and somewhere back in their mind it will start changing things because you have to have that recognition before you can go on and solve other racial issue, issues down the road. And Paul's work is one of several at Fountain Street Church tackling issues of equality. There's a painting titled America's Moral Compass, a 3D entry, We Will Raise This Wounded World, and a woven screen print of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. It is certainly a must-see venue at Art Prize this year. Our next artist entry was influenced by the Black Lives Matter movement, and she hopes that it will inspire love. The sculpture is outside First Park Congregational Church. I talk with the artist from her home near Detroit. My sculpture in Art Prize this year is inspired by the Black Lives Art or Black Lives Matter movement. Excuse me. It's I made it into art, and I um, I noticed that um, last year during shutdown, when the the movement and during the George Floyd and and some of the Ahmad Arbery um, events were really um, just. Um, it really bothered me. I'm actually a very introverted person and art for me and art for everyone actually is a form of communication. And these feelings that were arising in me were becoming so 
um, strong that um, I had this overwhelming feeling of just surrender, of putting my arms up. I was uh, heartbroken. I was angry. I was feeling hopeless for humanity. Um, and so I decided to do, do it's essentially like a... Uh, um, uh, self-portrait in a way of how I feel about um, how the the movement and how we really just need to come together and um, uh, the heart the love is what we need I, I named it um, be love more um, because basically I was hearing what people were saying on both sides and I thought what is going to help to bring this together and I'm like well love and compassion and forgiveness and so the heart was a really big element you'll notice in my sculpture the heart is cut out but it's also pronounced and it's part of both sides but in the black and the white and so it's really a, about trying to bring you know the humanity back to our world mm -hmm. What are you hoping people take away from it when they see it? I hope that they're inspired to understand that that's where we need to carry our energy is in our heart during this, these times and understand that we are all, all one and we are all the same. Um, it sounds very strange, to, but <laughs> I have to say this, in that, you know, I look at, um, you know, sometimes I'm like, do aliens have to invade this earth for us to all realize that we are all one and that we are all the same and for us to get our humanity back? Um, and um, unfortunately, I it, it just, it just have, I, I feel that it's needed to, uh, we need to express our, our support for, um, for all lives, black, white, Hispanic, all, all forms of creed, beliefs. Um, so this sculpture is representing how I feel about that. <laughs> Lisa, thank you so much. Thank you. Calls for social justice also inspired Elizabeth Schondelmeyer to create this painting titled Not a Threat. It's on display at the Center for Community Transformation, a new satellite venue for Art Prize this year on the city's southeast side. We interviewed Schondelmeyer about her work. You can see that story exclusively on woodtv.com. Just tap on the Art Prize section there. Sebastian Sandu was born in Romania, but he now calls Fenville home. His paintings inside the Harris Building on Division are truly incredible. News 8's Donovan Long meets the artist. Sebastian, really appreciate you joining me this afternoon. Tell me about your piece here. It seems to be reflective of diversity. Well, first, thank you for having me. Um, yes, it is a representation of diversity. It's my, my way of um, showing the diversity um, in, in our society. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's actually th several components in my work. Mm -hmm. um, first of all would be the, the visual experience. Mm -hmm. and, and here I, I'm playing with um, um, rethinking the, the art of portraits. You're from Romania. Yeah, I am from Romania. And you Correct. saw a lack of diversity there. Why was it important for you to bring this piece to life in America? Well, it's because I'm moving here. Uh, I moved here um, 10 years ago, mm -hmm. and the amount of, of um, mistreatment and suffering that I'm, that I'm seeing in, in here in the U.S. Um, kind of made me um, react mm -hmm. in this way in my, in my art. To me, you know, you get a bunch of different interpretations. That's the beauty of seeing artwork, but it looks like this is emblematic of the notion that we are more alike than we are different. What do you say to that? That's 100% that's correct. Um, I'm trying to show that we're all um, the same and we can function as one uh, uh, organism, let's say, um, regardless of visual differences or skin color or um, ethnic background. Um, we can function as one. That's, that's actually the title of the, the piece. Mm. Sebastian, I really appreciate your work. It's beautiful, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for, show, for, see, for coming to see me. There is an entry in Anabawan Park that is all about unity. We're going to show you how it transforms once the sun goes down. And we will meet the artist who created a powerful entry featuring sales with a message. Our primetime special continues next live from the Media Art Center in downtown Grand Rapids.
Welcome back to Meet the Artists. Art Prize awarded $200,000 in grants to artists this year. An entry in Anabawan Park won both the curatorial and equity grants, and it comes to life at night with a powerful message about unity and the Chinese immigrants who built the western half of the Transcontinental Railroad. The title of the piece is called Project Unity. Um, the reason why I chose that title was just because of my own personal feelings about everything going on in the world, um, how there are so many different perspectives that people can see maybe the same situation from different angles or interpret different th things differently based on their own lived experiences. I think that that's just the way that reality works, is that everybody has their own lived experience and that's what they draw from. The project title, Project Unity, came about with the design, which is based off of a very simple shape, the shape, the circle, and how the circle can represent unity connection, and vice versa, how a segmented or broken circle can represent disconnection or disunity. So the sculpture itself is built out of these vertical beams that are aligned in a circle. However, there are gaps, large and small, between the beams that are held together in place with banding that is supposed to act like kind of like a reinforcement um, so that things don't fall apart is like the metaphorical reason. So it's like, it's a critical analysis of what being in a state of unity or disunity means. So when I was invited to be part of the project and create a video projection, uh, I thought that what greater metaphor for unity than the first transcontinental railroad that uh, literally united the east and the west coast of the United States. And uh, I was also interested in reflecting on the history of Chinese immigrants. So upon research, I discovered that thousands of immigrant Chinese worked on the construction of the western half of the trans trans transcontinental railroad um, and they worked through really harsh conditions with mm -hmm. very low pay, but uh, historical record rarely identified any of those 20,000 Chinese workers. So uh, I wanted to create a video projection to memorialize those workers. And I went to uh, Utah and spent a few days filming the landscape uh, along where the workers labored. And I embedded uh, over a hundred names of those workers that scholars uh, were able to recover into those landscapes. Mm -hmm. And uh, what you see in the evening is that there will be a three channel video projection and the landscape sparrows around the viewers with the uh, names, uh, you know, moving along with the landscape. Yes, well, congratulations. It's Thank you. wonderful. So Thank you. Thanks. Some of the biggest topics of our generation are displayed on sails along the Riverwalk. We're going to talk to the artist about the meaning behind it. Plus an entry that shows what the 1960s were really like compared to what played out in TV shows. We're back live from Art Prize in just two minutes. Welcome back to Meet the Artists. This year, an Art Prize veteran is back. Tom Cancelli has key competed in more than half of Art Prizes that have ever been held. This year, his entry focuses on societal change. News 8's Emily Leonard shows us the artwork on display at the DeVos Place Riverwalk. Um, tell us about this piece. How did you come up with this idea? Well, a couple of years ago, I just had this idea where, I don't know, I came up with this idea of putting messages on sales. Mm -hmm. And winds have changed with so many things going on in the country right now, so many hot topics. I just thought it was a great way to come up with my creative ideas on a lot of these topics that, but do it in a creative way, not controversial, not this is what I want, but maybe to get people to maybe think a little more about some of these topics and 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 maybe reach out and and think about like the other person's view or you know is is there something I can do these are the issues of the day right now too let's go through the flags tell me about rising sea levels not just our imagination okay so with all the hurricanes everything that's going on Texas Louisiana the East Coast you know we're living it right now we can't turn away from these issues in you know climate change global warming um, it's out there, we're talking about it. What are we gonna do about it? So, I love this one, LGBTQ playing cards. Okay, so each of these do have a title that aren't on here. 
But this one speaks to, the title of this one kind of will help you understand it better. The LGBTQ card, the title's called Same as a Straight. Okay. As in being a straight yep, person. Yep, yep. So if you look at the cards and you see them and you say, oh, that's clever, cards and then the queen. But um, the real observer will notice that one queen is placing a gold ring on the other queen's hand, which is why most of it's just done in black and white. But somebody looking in, there's some details in here, and in that one, it's the gold ring. I love that. Little details yeah. you need to look out for. Let's go right to the middle. Land okay. of the free, home of the brave, with liberty and justice for all, 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 all. Looks like it goes on and on and on. That's my favorite. Uh, it's a mashup of the National Anthem and the Pledge of Allegiance. And it's just important that everybody not forget that last word. And, and all means all for every American. All means all. You can't take it out. Thank you, Tom. Tom sure. Trichelli with Winds of Change at DeVos Place on the Riverwalk. Come check it out. And just down the Riverwalk, you will see Eugene Clark's paintings that separate fact from fiction about America's history on race relations. Tell me about the paintings themselves, what you're, what you're sure. depicted here. Yeah, so the piece uh, that we're looking at right now um, is a civil rights themed piece beginning on the right-hand side with four African-American men that walked into a Woolworths uh, lunch counter and sat down but were re refused service. And uh, it was called the Greensboro Sit-In. And this spurred 300 additional days of similar sit-ins in lunch counters across the United States until African-Americans were given service. Um, this is in contrast with a television show that was aired the same week. It's a Donna Reed show. Uh, this was 1960, and, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, yes, Donna Reed show, where the main character is talking to a friend who visited from his travels, and he's just talking about traveling and how um, free he can be in doing so. And the title of the episode is called The Free Spirit. And I found that to be so, uh, such a contrast to what was actually happening uh, in our country at that moment uh, when it comes to something like a group of people that can't be served because of the color of their skin. Tell me about that moment you just said a couple days ago when, when you saw the family walking by. Yes, uh, I had just completed the installation with my family and we were standing back looking at the art ourselves and my wife took a photo and later on, I, I saw the photo, and it was a, a mother, a father, and their child walking by, and all of their heads were turned to look at the art. And it was such a great image for me because it sort of solidified uh, the goal, I think, that any artist has when they're trying to um, help to spread a message uh, through their artwork. You know, visual arts is so different than um, other art forms because, you know, there's no sound that goes with this. So it's all about the storytelling that the pictures provide and how people can interpret that. When we come back, two entries at one venue that are meant to be enjoyed. We're going to show you a one-of-a-kind tent experience. And anyone up for a game of Twister, we will talk to the artist trying to make sure everyone has some fun in our prize. We'll close tonight with two entries that you can really interact with at City Built Brewing. We start with a well-known artist from Detroit. The Shifi Experience is quite the party on the city's north side. I talked to Shifi about his inspiration. Tell me about inside a little bit, too. Inside is an immersive exhibition. So I'll be having NFTs playing on the top of the roof. I painted a mural in the back as well. I'll be playing music tonight as well, so I want to give everybody a visual and a audio feeling, you know, more than a feeling, just like, you know, embrace. Yeah, and is that what you hope people take away from it, is a, is a feeling? Yes, I feel like I'm more than an artist, I'm an experience, so I want people to take an experience like they just rode an artistic roller coaster after they leave out. Yeah. And is that is that sort of a theme that you carry on through throughout all of your work? Yes, because I'm a musician as well. 
So lately, as I've been growing as an artist, being inspired by other immersive exhibitions, I want to really bring all of my talents into one arena. So City Built and Scott Mint, they really helped me out and uh, to bringing this to life because this is my first immersive exhibit. Oh, this is your, okay. Yeah, this is my first one. Okay, great. What are you looking, what, when you see people experience it, what are you hoping to see from Happiness. That? Happiness, um, fun, um, wonder, definitely wonder, just something new. I, I really want to see how people take to the style because uh, I have a lot of murals in Detroit, my hometown, but this is my first time having something as big in Grand Rapids. So I just want to see people just having fun. I just want to see the glitter in their eyes. It is. Well, we're glad you're here. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. And right next to Sheepy's experience is a game of Twister that all ages can enjoy. So how in the world did you come up with this? This is actually, strangely enough, an idea that's been running around my head for like three or four years. Really? Yeah, actually. Um, I've always wanted to do this. Uh, I just never really had the means to. What do you hope people get out of your piece? <laughs> um, fun. It's interactive. It's meant for all ages. Like, you know, White, a couple green. kids you can draw on the outside. It's chalkboard, and you know, I just hope that everybody can just have a good time in my piece. I don't really need to win anything. I just hope people have fun. Perfect. Good. Well, congrats. Thank you. I really appreciate you guys. We hope you've enjoyed hearing from the artists tonight. Some of our prize is best seen after dark. Right now on woodtv.com, we have a story helping you plan your nighttime adventure. Just one week from tomorrow, it is one of the biggest nights in the art world. The Art Prize Awards return next Friday, only on Wood TV 8. We will see you tonight from News 8 at 10 and 11. Happy art prizing, everyone.